Imagine you're looking at a balancing scale, with everything you do for other people on one side and everything you do for yourself on the other side. If it isn't balanced, maybe it's time to spend a little more time on you. And therapy is a great place to start. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist online who can help you find that balance and stick to it. Visit BetterHelp.com slash positive to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash positive. What you watch depends on what kind of mood you're in. Sometimes you're craving comedies like Friends or South Park, and sometimes you're more into dramas like HBO's Succession and House of the Dragon. There's also cooking shows like Chopped and Beat Bobby Flay, and even movies like The Lord of the Rings and Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Well, Max is the streaming destination that has the best of entertainment for whatever mood you're in, anytime. And plans start at as little as $9.99 a month. Max, the one to watch. Subscription required. Visit max.com. On the line is the host of the Daily Tip and Odyssey Sports Betting Insider, Chelsea Messenger. Insider calls are presented by BetMGM. Go check out all of the latest lines today on the BetMGM app. Also, be sure to check out the Daily Tip podcast for more of Chelsea Messenger analysis. Just search BetMGM wherever you find your podcasts. All right, welcome back in, everybody. It's Sports Daily on a Thursday. Tommy Castor and Paul Savage in for Jacob Albrock this week on the line. Of course, Chelsea Messenger on the IHOP hotline, 869-1240, talking best bets. And uh, Chelsea, definitely want to start in the world of the NBA Finals. Uh, Paul and I talked yesterday as we were previewing Game 3 about the line and about how the line, I think it moved to around 2.5 Miami, 2.5 point underdogs. Looks like Game 4, the line is somewhere now around 3.5. Now that we know that the Nuggets, they're able to bounce back. They go into Miami. They get a big victory last night in game three. How do you feel about this line for game four and where it stands right now? Yeah, I would still lean towards the Nuggets because the bottom line for me is that if the Nuggets play to their potential, the Heat ain't stopping them. Like we saw it last night. We saw a little bit of it in the first game in the first half. When that offense is clicking, the Heat don't stand as single chance they don't have a prayer their only hope really is to hope they make their threes they didn't make their threes last night only hit 31 percent so I think the x factor is if Miami can get hot from three-point land and we've seen it in their other games in game two the only game that they won shot 48 percent from the three-point line so I think that's the only way they stay in it but still looking back to that game too they shot 48 percent from the three-point line and nearly lost that game You know, Jamal Murray had a chance at the buzzer to tie it. He missed it. The Heat won. But still, it still feels to me like the Heat need everything to go right to even stand a chance against the Nuggets. So I'm still leaning towards the Nuggets in uh, this next game. And also, here's a stat. In the NBA Finals with a line of six or less, the winner is 100% against the spread since 2007. That is a blistering Mm -hmm. 73-0 and two against the spread. So if you're thinking, hey, three and a half, maybe it's going to be a close game. History says it doesn't matter. Just pick a winner. Well, the spread is, is interesting, and it's almost like a no-brainer. It's it's obviously going to go up uh, uh, for the Friday game. Uh, but when I look inside this, when I look inside this particular uh, matchup for Friday night, what's your favorite uh, prop bet? What what can I make a little money on? Yeah, I would imagine Nikola Jokic is probably still your best bet. Last night, a triple-double for him was at plus money. I would imagine it's not going to be the case again. They don't have the player props out just yet, but I think Nikola Jokic is probably your go-to guy. And also the head-to-head market. They have been offering this head-to-head bet over at BetMGM that is Jamal Murray versus Jimmy Butler. And every single time, Jimmy Butler's been the favorite. Um, Jamal Murray has been the guy uh, for the Nuggets. I know Nikola Jokic puts up these huge numbers too, but still the fact that Nikola Jokic is getting a good amount of the defensive pressure, and we know how good of a facilitator he can be. And plus Jamal Murray, what, he had 20 points in the first half last night? Uh, I think Jamal Murray head-to-head over Jimmy Butler. Something seems a little off with Jimmy Butler. I know he had a a pretty solid night last night, but still the – the higher scoring games that we saw at the start of the NBA postseason don't really seem to be there for Jimmy Butler. So once again, going back to the well, Jamal Murray over Jimmy Butler. Chelsea, there's a couple of players on both teams that I feel like have been streaky depending on the game. You know, sometimes they, 
jump in and do a lot. Other times, you don't really hear from them at all. On the Nuggets side, I think it's Christian Brown, and then who had a great game in Game Three. And then on the Miami side, it's Gabe Vincent. And you know, it depends on the game. You know, they, and really the way that they're being defended, and and how you know the the coaches, whether it's Malone or Spolster, wanting to utilize those guys. When you've got when you've got players like that. Is it important to try to basically just stay away from them when you're betting and go for more of like the Jokic's and the Butler's and the ones that you know are going to be consistent game in and game out? It's tough because sometimes rotations can be a big advantage when betting series to series. Say this series is a much different matchup uh, than, you know, playing against the Lakers for the Nuggets. But the thing about Christian Brown that really surprised me last night is well, it didn't surprise me. It's just what's jumped out to me about him is the effort level. Like, he is there diving for balls. He's there, you know, getting steals. And I was surprised to see the chemistry that he had with Nikola Jokic. Some of those passes were art. The The chemistry that they had almost looked like a quarterback and a receiver. So, Christian Brown, definitely an X factor in this one. But a lot of it hinges on Michael Porter Jr. Like, he's kind of been a liability for the Nuggets so far. But if he refines his game, I feel like he'll probably take over some minutes for Christian Brown. So I think that's the X factor. If you are looking at betting on something on Christian Brown, that I'm not sure if it's totally dependable. So I think that it's a little more risky betting on the role players, but if you can find a good matchup or somebody who's been cold, like look at what we've seen from Caleb Martin thus far last night, he had 15 points, which was an outlier from this series. But for the most part, he has been, I'm not going to say silence, but a lot more quiet in this series as opposed to last. So you can play the over or under on role players if you have a gut feeling, if you can see a, a dip in their minutes, if you see an increase in their minutes. But I think there are too many variables in this particular series for me to want to actually put my money on it. Well, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a superstar that uh, that I wouldn't put any money on, and I want you to. You know, so, sort of tell me if I'm on to something or I'm really not. But Jimmy Butler is the one I'm talking about. Last night, he didn't defend very well, did he? I, I don't think he defended. He's not moving his feet. I get the sense, you know, it's a long season in the NBA, a lot of games over a long period of time. I think his legs may be dead. I mean, he hasn't had a whole lot of time off. But he did not defend last night very well at all. Not moving his feet. I think that anybody who makes a prop bet on Jimmy Butler is nuts. Where am I going wrong on that one, Chelsea? Well, he still had 28 points because the problem no is defense. the defense. shots are defending. Well, I mean he's not def- I mean he's not he's not working hard on defense. Right. Um, I, I'm trying to think of the way that that pertains to like what would you be betting on. Um, cause I, oh, I don't well, think you can yeah. bet on like defense. It would have to be like steals and blocks. Okay. Uh, I don't well. even know what the, I don't even know what the line would be. Uh, cause he did have a block and I'm, I'm sure those numbers are pretty low. So you have to be, um, careful with that because, you know, from a betting standpoint, I just, I don't know if there's a bettable angle there. Cause the thing is like, even if he does feel like he's out of gas, which I agree with you on that standpoint, I think he might be playing a little hurt too. But he's still getting the shot attempts. Like, he shot 24 times. So, I don't think it's enough for me to take an under on him. I think it's enough for me to take Jamal Murray over him head-to-head. But still, he had 28 points last night on 24 attempts. Uh, He's still getting to the free throw line. Had six free throw attempts last night. So, he is still willing himself into the conversation, even though he hasn't been nearly as efficient as he has been earlier on in the postseason. Well, thanks for straightening me out because you're right. <laughs> I, I I guess I'm showing my uh, how naive I am about uh, some of these prop bets, I guess. Thank you, Chelsea. I needed the lesson. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Uh, it's just hey, defense is tough because there's just yeah. not a ton of lines out on it. For sure. Chelsea, how about the, uh, the over-under for game four? Um, I'm seeing it right now at 210 and a half. And it looks like the, at least as far as the the public is concerned, they're kind of split right now as far as the over or the under. I'm seeing 60% of the money right now is on the over, 40% is on the under. Knowing that with the way that the series is is standing right now with the Nuggets up two games to one, 
and the heat, you know, I, and you mentioned Jimmy Butler, maybe being out of gas or playing hurt. Are you leaning more towards the under, or do you think the over is in play more in game four? It's tough because this line's been sinking because at the start of the series, I believe these totals were around 218 and every single game we've had low scoring affairs. So they continue to drop. So I think the question is, at what point is the number too low? Yeah, start at 219. Game two was 216. Last night was 212 and a half. So at some point, one would think that you got to get an over in there and you got to see a higher scoring game. But I think it's more the tempo because Miami really likes to slow things down. And I think Denver was slowing things down in the second half just because they had the lead. Uh, So I would still probably lean towards an under. But I think that the sabotage factor is that this number is probably getting too low for me to feel comfortable about it. Because the other point is we see this a lot in the postseason is there tends to be a lot of blowouts. And I think that's why we see that really overwhelming stat to where, you know, the spread doesn't matter if the spread is less than six. So that means one team is usually scoring like in the 90s. So I would still lean towards the under because the defensive adjustments have been made by the Nuggets. Like the the one big one they were talking about last night was cleaning up the discipline errors that they had in the previous game. You know, you saw the the plays where guys like Contavious Caldwell Pope fouled on two three point shots. That's six free throws that they gave up there, and they kind of cleaned up some of those errors in this game last night. So I would still lean towards the under, but at two ten makes me a little too nervous. Is there any bet that that uh, would affect the amount of time between games? I mean. Right now, it's it's been three three days bef- between games up to this point. Now it's two games, basically forty eight hours, and you're back on the court going full throttle in a in the fourth game of the NBA Finals. Is there a bet that that would could could be affected by such a short uh, period of time between games? I don't think so. I think if there was travel involved, but it's another game in Miami. Okay. It's more time for both teams to prepare. Like, I think that's more than enough time for both these head coaches to cook something up. The problem I have is no matter how good of a head coach Eric Spolstra is, you can't create size. And they're watching these games. That's the first thing you notice is the huge size advantage that the Nuggets have. So it just seems like the more repeatable game plan and the more dependable style of offense. So I don't, I don't know. I don't think the, the time between the games really matters that much to me. I do think these head coaches are excellent at what they do. They'll have something cooked up for this next game. Um, but I don't really see it being a huge factor. Well, Chelsea, before we let you go, let's shift gears real quickly into Major League Baseball. A couple of games that I'm keeping my eyes on as far as betting is concerned. The early game today, the Dodgers and the Reds, the Reds have been – I feel like on fire lately, especially the last couple of games. Uh, the Clayton Kershaw taking on Graham Ashcraft. Uh, that game starts in just a couple of hours from now. And then a little bit later on this evening, the matchup between the Mets and the Braves. Spencer Strider on the bump against Justin Verlander. Those are a couple of games I'm looking at that I'm interested in betting. Are you interested in those or are there other games that you're looking at? We got to talk about the Dodgers-Reds game because what has been going on in that series is nothing short of spectacular. If you are a Reds fan, they have their new prospect, Ellie De La Cruz, who's been unstoppable. In his two games, the Reds are undefeated. Back-to-back walk-off wins for the run, uh, Reds against the Dodgers as well. And also, in sports betting, we're always looking for value and looking at teams that are maybe not getting enough credit in the market. Today, the run line on the Reds game is two and a half. A normal run line in baseball is one and a half. So the fact that you're getting two and a half runs of credit, that means the Reds can lose by two and you can still win your bet is crazy to me. I think the X factor is probably Graham Ashcraft. The starting pitcher for the Reds has been down around terrible. So maybe that's the sabotage factor, but also you're getting a two run cushion because Graham Ashcraft has allowed 20 earned runs in his last 19 innings of work. So maybe that's the problem. I think the first five over is also worth a look as well. Uh, but if you're giving me two and a half with a red hot red team, give me the reds. Chelsea, have you ever seen uh, as great and fun of a home run as the one that Ellie De La Cruz hit the other day? Oh my gosh, that was incredible. Well, the walk off was pretty electric too. Uh, yeah. Cause well, the guy who hit it, who is it? Will Benson. It was 
somebody who I'd never even heard of. And I don't know if you've seen the video of it, but man, inject that energy into my veins. <laughs> this is a guy that got sent down to the minors after a one for 20 slump. And then he gets to hit a walk off home run against the Dodgers. What a feeling that must be. Yeah, no doubt. Anything else in uh, Major League Baseball you're looking at for either today or this weekend? I'll be on a first five under between the Diamondbacks and the Nationals. I think both these starting pitchers are pretty good between Merrill Kelly, ERA under three, and uh, Josiah Gray, who's ERA sitting right at three. And also the X factor is we have terrible air quality here on the East Coast. And in D.C., it's not nearly the level that it is in New York City, you've seen the pictures, I'm sure, of yes. you know yeah. some of the effects of the wildfires. But still, I think it's going to be harder on hitters. You know, the air density is going to be higher. It's going to be harder for the ball to travel out of the park, and also just harder to see the ball. So I'm on the first five under. Two good pitchers, and also the added X factor, bad air. Well, how about that? I mean, a, a factor of uh, wildfires actually playing into uh, the kind of bet you make. I would have never thought that, but uh, definitely interesting to to look at for the bets this weekend. Chelsea, good stuff uh, as always, and uh, glad to have you on. We'll have you back on next week, okay? Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, that was Chelsea Messenger, the host of The Daily Tip and Odyssey Sports Betting Insider. Insider calls are presented by BetMGM. Go check out all the latest lines today on the BetMGM app. Good stuff there, Paul. I, again, like I just mentioned, I would have never thought to consider bad air quality in the bets I make in baseball. Well, hey, I, think, I, I guess whatever works, find whatever angle, whatever advantage you can, right? Somehow you got that out, and I'm telling you right now, that was brilliant. I would have never thought of that. But now that I think about it, well, sure, that sure seems like an advantage could be taken care of with the air quality, and they're having some real problems. I hope everything works out, but... Man, have you seen yeah. the scenes on on television of, of how bad things are? I mean, it uh, it looks like it looks it's like nighttime. an apocalyptic movie. It, yeah, it looks that's like what it looks the, like. The world is ending. The it's, world it's crazy. Is and I know, I know that uh, I think it was the Yankees game got postponed last night, and I saw the scenes at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, it was it was and insane. Philadelphia. So and Philadelphia, yeah, for sure. Air quality really bad. So I know that we you know we're trying to find angles in the world of betting, but in all seriousness, though. Uh, thoughts go out to everybody up there in the, on the East Coast, Northeast, and hopefully everything turns out okay because that is not healthy air to breathe whatsoever. Our thanks to Chelsea Messenger, as always, for joining us here on Sports Daily. We're going to step aside, take another break. When we come back, we're going to dive more into the NBA Finals in our second hour. But on the other side of the break, we'll do a giveaway. Another giveaway is on the way for you. It's Tommy Castor, Paul Savage, Jad Chambers, Sports Daily, coming right back. Ninety-seven five and twelve forty KFH. Brought to you by Forever Lawn. Looking for an adventure? Find yours in a Toyota, like a Camry with stylish design and a reputation for reliability that can't be beat. Or go with a Corolla, both affordable and capable, with so many trims and features to choose from. Or check out the new Crown, presenting you with luxurious style and elegant amenities to make your day a breeze. No matter your adventure, Toyota has you covered. Visit buyatoyota.com for more. Toyota, let's go places.